Okay, how much does the cost of living change when the price of a good changes? Anybody know? Well, okay, intuitively, how about mathematically? How can we, yeah, you're, I think your intuition's right. How can we get there? Let's think about it. Well, what's the, how, we have a tool for measuring the cost of living, which is appropriately named the cost function, right? But you ever thought that like the cost function might be somehow linked up to the cost of living, right? The cost function. What does the cost function measure? The cost of getting to a given level of utility, right? So C of P1 T plus 1 up to Pn T plus 1 U bar, okay, minus C of P T P1 T up to P N T U bar would be equal to the change in the cost of living. Right? By definition. By definition, the change in the cost of living is what it costs to get a given level of utility on these prices versus what it would cost to get that same level of utility on the, on the old prices, right? Now, when I want to think about the world this way, I have this same kind of issue about what's my reference point, right? And what does that correspond to here? It corresponds to what? Which level of utility I pick? I could either take the T level of utility and say, what would it cost to get the T level of utility here? What would it cost to get the T level of utility today? I could take, what would it cost to get the T plus one level of utility in each of the two periods, right? So that same ambiguity that we're going to have is going to be true here, even though this isn't an approximation. This is really a question about what am I trying to capture, right? And which am I trying to measure? This is really an issue of what am I measuring, not so much about which approximation I'm using, right? Because those are different questions. How much did the cost of getting the 1950 utility go up is a different question from how much did the cost of getting the 2015 level of utility go up, right? Those are just different questions, all right? <laughs> But anyway, the idea is change in the cost of living would be measured by the change in the cost function. Now think about what the change in the cost function is if only one price is changing, right? Right? If only one price is changing, then what we can think of is the change in the cost of living is just, let's say it's only good one that's changing, would be C of P1 T plus 1, comma, P2, call it bar, up to Pn bar, because they're not changing U bar, right? Those are all fixed. Let's think of those as staying fixed. Minus C of P1 T, P2 bar, up to Pn bar, U bar. So now, I think about a world where only this one price is changing. So I want to know the difference in cost between two price levels where these prices only differ in that this one price is moving. Now, of course, the difference in a function is equal to the integral of the derivative of that function over that range. So that's equal to the integral from P1t to P1t plus 1 of partial C partial P1 dP1, right? That is, I'm going to integrate over the, this range from P1t to P1t plus 1. But of course, this partial derivative is what? That's just the Hicksian demand function. So that's, the, that's equal to the integral of the Hicksian demand curve of P1, P2 bar up to Pn bar, U bar, dP1, 
is equal to integral of that Hicksian demand curve over that same range. So if I want to look at my picture, let me go back to my picture. So in terms of my picture, here's my picture. Okay. All right, so that's my picture. I got my demand curve. Here's x1, p1, p1 1950, p1 2015. So, all right. So what would happen? What would happen with these with these demand curves? So how is this going to work? All right. So how, what is this? So the way I drew it, this was what? What kind of demand curve do you think I was drawing? I said prices were constant and income was constant other than the price of good ones. So what kind of demand curve would that be? What kind of demand curve holds income constant and price of all the other goods constant? Marshallian demand curve. It, this would also be a Marshallian demand curve if Let's say, for example, all prices and income went up by the same proportion other than good one. Everybody realizes this would still be a Marshallian demand curve? How many people remember, could think about that? Why is that equivalent? All prices and income other than good one go up by the same percentage, but good one gets cheaper. Why is that the same? as the Marshallian demand curve. Well, that's true of the Hicksian demand curve, too. Well, the homogeneity would say I could just deflate prices and income all by that increase, which would now make all the other ones constant. And the only thing happening would be the price of good one would be going down. Right? So it would be equivalent to if, every, if prices and income went up by 20%, other than the price of good one, say, stayed constant, that's the same experiment as reducing the price of good one by 20%, holding prices and income constant, right? Homogeneity tells me that has to be true, OK? The key is, for all the other goods, income and prices are going up at the same rate, OK? That was, that's what will make it into that Marshalling experiment. People see that? Homogeneity is what's going to tell me that's going to happen. All right. So let me think of this as a Marshallian demand curve. XM, I'll just call it. Now, the analysis I went over there says, well, I should really be using a Hicksian demand curve. Now, what do the Hicksian demand curves look like relative to the Marshallian demand curve? They're a little bit steeper, right? How much steeper? How would I know how much steeper they are? What equation tells me how much steeper they are? Slutsky, Slutsky equation, right, the Slutsky equation. So if I knew the income elasticity and I knew the shares, I could figure out how much steeper they are, right? So let me say this is a pretty unimportant good. Let's assume it shares like 1%, right? Let's assume the income elasticity is 1, just to make life simple, right? Then they would be, the elasticity would differ by 0.01, right? So if this had an elasticity of minus 4, the other would have an elasticity of minus 3.99, right? They would be very, very close together. Right? You'd probably hardly tell them apart on this picture. On the other hand, if this thing had an income share of 20%, then the, then the income elasticities would differ by, the, the price elasticity would differ more. So you might say, well, I got this. I got this. XH of U 1950, right? That would, be, that would be the Hicksian demand curve corresponding to the 1950 level of utility. There would be another 
Hicksian demand curve, XH 2000, U, U 2015, right? That is, I would have, that would be my picture. It would look something like that. So I would, my Hicksian demand curve from 1950, my Hicksian demand curve for 2015, and neither one of those is an approximation, right? They're both exact answers to different questions. One is, how much cheaper was it to obtain the 1950 level of utility? And the other is, how much, che how much cheaper it was to get the 2015 level of utility? Right? That's really the, the question. 